Hi kids, I am back. Today I am going to read another book, A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans and she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school. She could not decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. Her mother ran into the room and she screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You are completely covered in stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Mrs. Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right? She asked. I feel fine, Camilla answered. But just look at me. You get back in the bed this instant, her mother ordered. You are not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She did not want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what the other kids would say, and she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he explained. I have never seen anything like it. Are you having a cough, sneezing, rose, runny nose, aches? pain, chills, hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrolled switching. No, Camilla told him, I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Mrs. Cream, I don't see any reason why she should not go to school tomorrow. Get some ointment that she should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it does not, you know where to reach me and off he went. The next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Crayon and Knight of Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act as if everyone were normal. But when the class said the Pledge of El Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white and blue, and she broke out in stars. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all pur purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard. And a pattern of square covered her skin. Soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors. And poor Camilla was changing faster than you change the channels on a TV. That night, Mrs. Harms, the school principal, called. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla home from school. She's just too much of a distraction. I have been getting calls from other parents. They are afraid those tribes may be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed she could not believe that two days ago everyone liked her. Now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. No, thank you, signed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans, but she had been laughed at enough for one day. Well, yes, I see, Miss Dr. Bumblebee mumbled when her cream phone the next day. I think I did better bring in the specialist. We will be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in, along with white coats. He introduced them to the cream. This is Dr. Group, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. Then the specialist went to work on Camilla. They squeezed and jammed, tapped, tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Group. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not chicken pox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or sunburn, said 
said Dr. Young. Try this, said the specialist. They even handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Crook. Then they filled out the front door, followed by Dr. Bamboo. That night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up the next morning, she did feel different. But she got dressed, her clothes did not fit her right. She looked in the mirror and there staring back at her was a giant multicolored pill with her face on it. Dr. Mumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Cream called. But this time, instead of specialists, he brought experts. Dr. Gord and Mr. Mellon were the first scientific mind in the land. Once again, Camilla was poked, prodded, looked at, and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers. Then they handled uh, to, together and whispered. Dr. God finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, fuzzy little virus balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possible some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mellon. Out pops squiggly little bacteria tails, tails, or it could be fungus, added Dr. God. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blotches. The expert looked at Camilla, then at each other. We need to go over those numbers again back at the lab. Dr. God explained, we will call you when we know something. But the expert did not have a clue, much less or cure. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel outside her house telling the story of bizarre case of incredible changing kid. Soon a huge crowd was camped out on front lawn. The cream were swamped all, with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbologists, nutritionists, psychics, an old medicine man, a guru, or even a vegetarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it's hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you had said that, Camilla ground. Slowly, she started to melt into the walls of her room. She bed became her mouth. Her nose was dresser. Two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do, said Mrs. Cream. It just kept getting worse and worse, she began to sob. At that moment, Mrs. Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it and there stood an old woman who was just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. She went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes. One of the worst I have ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, that might do the trick. Are those magic? Asked Mr. Mrs. Cream. Oh my, no, replied the kind old woman. There is no such thing. There are just plain old lima beans. I will bet you like some, would not you? She asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big heaping plate full of lima beans, more than just about anything, but she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. No one likes lima beans, especially me. Oh dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in the bag and started towards the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good, and being laughed at 
for eating that them was nothing compared to what she has been going through. She finally could not stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of lima beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Hmm, said Camilla. Suddenly, the branches, the feathers, the squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it stopped, they stood Camilla. Everyone was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you were in there somewhere. She patted Camilla's on the head. Then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Afternoon, Camilla was not quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she did not care a bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted, and she never had a touch of stripes again. The end.